Stop it, stop it, stop it. You're actually wild if you do this to your hair and trust and believe. You're not gonna see any growth if you continue to do this to your hair. Stop using extensions. What is wrong with you? Is it that you don't love yourself? Hazy stars, what's good in the hood? It's your girl, Zara, popularly Lily No. Hazy stars, what's good in the proverbial hood? It's your girl, Zara, popularly known, of course, is Epic Zara. <laughs> And I'm back with another video. Now today we're going to talk about the seven things you absolutely should never ever do if you intend to grow your hair long. Now I know that's pretty like heavy, but we're finna do it now. I don't wanna waste your time. So without further ado, let's get into the video. But of course, before we do, please be sure to give this video one big thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy this type of content. Please be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think those things are. Be sure also to share this video with your friends and your loved ones and last but never ever can be least, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time we post a new video. Now with all of that being said, let's get right into this beautiful presentation. Cue the intro. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that little intro. Follow me on Instagram, of course, as the intro suggested. But we're going to talk about, again, the seven don'ts for growing natural hair. Now, I already have a video about this that I made several years ago, but of course, there are a few things that I've changed and updated. So we're going over those things in this particular video. Now, if you all would like to see how I felt several years ago, I mean, that video did get like about four or 500K Vs, I think. I'm gonna link it to in the top right in the cards so you can check it out. And of course, it's going to be in the description box down below. So be sure to have a look and I'll see you in the next segment of this video. Un, don't believe the hype. This is controversial, but obviously I don't care. And do I look like I do? Cause I don't. <laughs> a lot of people are out here preaching don't use oils, don't use butters. They're bad for your hair. Raw oils and raw butters are the death of your hair. Uh, uh. It's you. But on the other hand, me? Oh, I'm gonna turn up. Now while that's cute, and while it works for some people, literally lipids make up one to 9% of every human being's hair. So they're kind of important when it comes to maintaining the hair. Now, let's quickly take a look at the definition of the word lipid on another screen. So now that we're briefed on that, let's take a look at the definition of the word oil on another screen. So of course, from those two definitions, it's easy to observe that oils are actually lipids, y'all. Like I said, our hair is comprised of lipids. That's not all, of course, it's comprised of keratin, which makes up roughly 90 plus percent of the hair. Now, a lot of people misuse oils, which is why I'm sure a lot of people are trying to demonize them and turn them into the Satan of the natural hair community. But oils are really, really great for not only sealing the hair, when the hair is adequately moisturized, but also penetrating the hair shaft and preventing a host of hair damage issues that a lot of naturals face. Now, um, to be a shady <laughs> these tyrants and extremists ramming the no oils cult down our throats still have lipids in most of their staple products. So how far like you finna extract the oils out of those two, like, or what? because I'm lost. Contrary to the rhetoric that they keep pushing to sell their very expensive, expensive -o and overpriced products, oils that are infused very potently actually can stimulate hair growth. There are also raw oils that don't need to be infused that help to lubricate the hair and mimic sebum. Now it's not every individual that produces a lot of sebum naturally, no matter how healthy of a lifestyle you lead or how well you care for your scalp. And sometimes the supplementation of oils has the ability 
to almost take the place of sebum in your own hair care routine. Now, if you're a member of this exclusive group of men, women, and non-binary individuals, then you definitely already have my recipe Bible, which of course will be linked in the top right corner for your purchasing pleasure, it's 20% off. Now inside my recipe Bible, I have potent infusions that not only stimulate hair growth, but also heal the scalp dramatically. I also have other infusions in there that are much simpler and support the health of the hair shaft by penetrating the hair and preventing, of course, excessive hair damage, like I so aptly pointed out previously. Now, of course, you have full access to these in my recipe Bible, but that's the only place you'll be able to find them for now. Alternately, you can get my hair bundle, which contains all of my digital products and eBooks surrounding hair growth and retention. I also have a hair growth calendar in there, five different ones, and there's one even for those of you that do use no oils, no butters. Ultimately, I could never ever subscribe to this rhetoric because I find it ridiculous for my own journey, but please do what works for you. Here are a few reviews of my digital products from you. Be sure to pause to read. If you feel more comfortable without raw oils and butters, that's totally fine. But please take your time to understand the composition of the hair and understand why oils are still in these expensive products that the oil-free police keep pushing. Now, if you would like to see how to stimulate your hair and scalp and grow hair, as well as maintain your hair without oil and butters in a way that's holistic and not tyrannical, then please check out my <laughs> No Oils, No Butters video, which is right here. Feel free to check that out. Like I said, I don't subscribe, but I'm also not going to really knock someone for choosing to do this for their hair as long as they're not demonizing oils. Duh. Don't use extensions in your hair, period. Stop using extensions. What is wrong with you? Is it that you don't love yourself? That's what is I'm wrong with you, but you're not- Stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? LOL, jokes and personal attacks aside, this is a very, very controversial one. Let me preface this by saying that I'm usually the queen of knotless braids, but less is actually more. Now this is more for my fine haired naturals and fine haired people in general, no matter what state your hair is in. If you're not ready to be vigilant with your styling and you cannot do your hair yourself, then just, just put the extensions down, please. Please, my dear friend. Extensions do have the potential to grow hair, but a lot of people don't see consistent growth and this is why. Their stylists are simply too heavy handed. The extensions irritate their scalp and interact poorly with their hair. They don't cleanse their scalps and hair while the extensions are installed. Ew. Some extensions are heavy and pull on the hair and the scalp while they hang. Other extensions are so high maintenance that home care is very, challenging and essentially unattainable for many. Some examples of home care that might be pretty crazy are K-tips, tape-ins, and micro-links. Extensions can be great for growth when installed and maintained properly. 90% of people won't have either one, so you might as well just avoid it altogether, sis, or bro or non-binary sibling. Some styles that I feel are really fantastic for growing the hair when done properly include crochet, when done with pre-treated hair and cornrows, of course, that are not too tight. Glueless wigs over a cornrow base that allows you to cleanse your scalp and your hair fairly frequently. Knotless braids with proper preparation, good pre-treated hair that is not heavy and braids that are not too tight and they're also nice and thin to ensure that they aren't too heavy. Do you all want to see how I protect my hair without extensions, including this beautiful style that I'm rocking today? <laughs> If so, please drop some orange emojis in the comment section down below. Toi, stop brushing and combing your hair. Seriously, stop it, stop it, stop it. This is in the last video, but I really needed to include it here because it's so much more essential than I thought. Now let's not deceive ourselves. The bends and kinky to curly hair make it weaker than other hair types. Our hair is fragile and delicate, though the strength does improve when it's grouped together. Brushing can actually lead to serious mechanical damage if done too frequently 
or improperly, it can also pull out huge amounts of hair. This can lead to holes in the hair shaft, splits, breakage, protein bond disruption and destruction, hydrogen bond disruption and destruction, and so much more. As much as I abhor finger detangling, and I mean abhor, I literally despise finger detangling, I try very much to separate my hair throughout my wash day to avoid excessive tangling and the excessive brushing that tends to follow those tangles. Now, because my hair is so dense, I do actually have to brush it to prevent it from matting down the line, but I only brush my hair during the pre-poo process and during the styling process. Now to help you with your pre-poo, which of course we mentioned in our dues video, you can check out my recipe Bible, which is 20% off and linked in the top right corner for your consumption. It's a beautiful book. And inside that book, I have all of the mucilage jellies that I use to pre-poo my hair. Not only are they super slippery and super effective, they have a lot of health benefits. And Brunin has a ton of amino acids, so it's brilliant for strengthening the hair and works really well on low porosity hair as a detangler and a cleanser. Aloe vera has a lot of nourishing and healing ingredients and is a brilliant exfoliant as it contains salicylic acid amongst other AHAs and BHAs that deeply clean the scalp and still manage to keep hair super soft. Now, these are just two examples of some of the jellies in my recipe Bible. I have some more exotic ones in there, which you all should definitely check out and let me know what you think. Again, I did talk about this in my do's video, which is going to be linked in the top right corner in the cards above and in the description box. So everything that I've already linked in the cards will be in the description box because I mean, you guys have to find it one way or another. And I want to make this as easy as possible because I do genuinely love you. For those of you who struggle with detangling, I'll also keep my favorite detangling brush in the description box down below, and I'll show you a picture of it. It's basically like a tangle teaser type of brush. Um, it's not a branded tangle teaser, but it works really phenomenally, and I got it from Amazon, so check the description box for details on that brush. I can't live without it. It's great if you're tenderheaded because it won't pull your hair, and it glides past tangles as opposed to yanking them out, so... Again, check that out. Cats, don't change your hair routine every two months. Find something that works and keep doing it. Duh, like, <laughs> come on y'all. Your hair is not like your body. Your body needs to be shocked and excited, thrown off balance in certain ways to continue to see consistent milestones in fitness. Contrary to popular belief, your hair will not plateau if you keep using the same products. Stop that. Stop spreading that false information. It may peak in health and remain there, but it will not stop growing and thriving. Once you have a regimen that works and products that work, stick with it. Please, please stop changing your products every two seconds and stop searching for the next best thing. It's one thing to rotate products that you use all the time just to give your hair different types of nutrients. It's another thing to keep changing your products every five seconds because Felicia down the street said that your hair will grow to your butt crack if you use this magical elixir. Regimen should only change if your body changes because if your body changes, your hair will probably change too. Presenting new hair needs or if the season changes, also presenting new and different hair needs. Now determining a hair growth regimen can be really, really challenging, but I have a solution for you in my hair growth calendar. It's a three month calendar that repeats. So essentially it's a forever calendar because after the three months are up, you just repeat the calendar over and over and over. Now it comes in five different versions, one for low porosity, one for neutral porosity, one for high porosity, one for dry, sensitive, and troubled scalp, and one for no oils and butters. And that's going to be linked in the top right here for you all again. <laughs> So please be sure to check that out. It's a very strict regimen and completely removes the stress of trying to build your own regimen whilst also offering some great recommendations for products you can use and how to maintain your hair every single day. And it's 50% off y'all. It's 50% off, so be sure to check it out. Be sure to also check out my hair routine video, which is going to be linked in the top right in the cards. So yeah, please check that out. Let me know what you think. That's also an excellent resource 
for trying to at least help piece together a solid hair regimen. Sank, do not let people touch your hair. Stop it. Stop doing that. Don't let those dirty, nasty hands be all up in your hair. Many people have evil intentions. Many people are jealous of you. Many people's hands are not clean, physically and spiritually. In Nigeria, there are people that will try to touch your hair just so they can harm you or harm your hair. Now, I don't want to go into much detail about this, but if you're Nigerian, if you're African, if you're Caribbean, then you understand exactly what I'm talking about and you should not take this lightly. If you want your hair to thrive, if you want your hair to flourish, don't let people touch your hair, please. And um, drop some white emojis. If you want to hear a story about how someone's evil intentions resulted in the total hair loss of one of my family members. Cease. Don't neglect scalp exfoliation. Exfoliating your scalp is essential for loosening dead skin cells and removing debris from deep inside the hair follicles. This debris and this dead skin inhibits hair growth and creates the perfect feeding environment for fungi and bacteria. I won't go into detail here because I literally have a video all about why it's super important to be exfoliating your scalp. I mean, that's not all it's about, but I talked about scalp exfoliation at length in that video. So please be sure to check out that video on the top right corner again. Be sure to pull that up in another window. That way you can watch it after you finish watching this video. Set. Don't underestimate the value of internal nutrition. I don't know how many times I'll preach this in different, different, different videos, y'all, but I've been singing this like a song. <laughs> for many years at this point. All the things you do outwardly to your hair will be completely in vain if you are not healthy internally. The hair is not an essential organ. The body won't push nutrients to it if it does not have enough. Now again, I'm not going to go into great detail here because I have a video that includes this particular topic at length and I'm going to link it in the top right corner so you all can check it out there. I talk about P, H, R, and S, or friends, um, which is essentially a system of things that you need to have in order to grow really long hair. So be sure to check that out. Be sure to check out the nutrition portion of the video. It's super important. The hair is one of the first parts of the body to actually show when someone is malnourished. Wow, y'all, that was a lot of information, but please, what did you learn? Tell me. I would love to know what you took away from this really, really important video. Now, if you have made it this far, please be sure to drop some blue emojis down below. Thank you so much for watching. I love you so much. And I will certainly see you in the next video, but of course, be sure to subscribe, turn on your notifications, thumbs up, please and please and please comment, of course, and share this with your friends and your loved ones. Goodbye, babe, and I'll talk to you later.